I have an amplifier that is missing the grounding prong on the plug. And oddly enough, I'm sure you can't see in there, it's like, it's like a flat plastic bottom on that little hole. And I kind of tried like poking it. And it looks like there was no metal prong in there ever. So I don't know what's up with that, but whatever. Either way, um, and it's not an it's not like an older amp or anything. It's a newer amp, um, just a cheap, inexpensive amp. But uh, anyway, I'm going to replace this with one of these that I picked up at a hardware store for like two dollars. And you unscrew this, open it, screw the three um, wires to the little um, contacts one, two, and then the ground for three, and then screw it back up and you're good to go. So I had another video where I replaced an entire power cord, but uh, that's kind of a lot of work and there's nothing wrong with this except for that prong. So I'm gonna go the root of this. So the first thing we have to do is cut the old plug off and that takes a few minutes, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. So I'm gonna do that right now, and I will be back. Alrighty, I stripped the, I cut the plug off. Ta-da, cut the plug off, stripped the black outer uh, insulation, and what I did was I sort of measured approximate because obviously if you have more off of it you have a lot more wire to work with but I didn't want to have any bare wire even though it's insulated sticking out past this plug just because then it looks uh, unprofessional unfinished so this way it guarantees that when you close it up it's going to be just black insulation going into the plug so anyway, I did that. So now what we do is we take a look at this and we have black, white, and green. Green is the ground and on the inside it's painted green. Okay, then we have a brass screw and a steel zinc, whatever it is, screw, silver colored screw. We put the white and the black to the two on the side, the green to the green. Since it's alternating current, it doesn't matter, there's not, no positive or negative. You just hook it to whatever. So either one goes to either one. So since the wires are kind of set up in this pattern, I'm just gonna do it this way. So that the green goes to the green and white will go over here and black will go over here. That way I don't have to try to cross them and everything. Okay, so then the other thing that we're gonna do is we bend this into a little hook. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I took the stranded wire and twisted like that, just with my fingers, just to try to hold them together a little better because there's like dozens of little thin wires. Okay. So we bend it into a little hook. Okay. I'm going to put it onto this. And what I'm doing is I am putting the hook that I just made going in the direction that I'm turning the screw. So righty tighty, I put it in that way. Okay, and I'll show you in a second why I would do it that way. Okay, and then you just tighten it down and that makes the contact. And it has a little barrier on either side, on, all, on three sides that keep any stray little pieces from uh, sticking out too far, but you want to try to keep it neat. You don't want little stray pieces of wire sticking out because that's not so good. So anyway, I had the hook going this way. So as I tighten, it's going in the direction of the wire hook. If I had the hook going the other way, as I'm tightening it, it may actually try to open, straighten the hook back out, kick pieces out. This way the hook is going sort of curving to the right, and I'm screwing this into the right, so it's just reinforcing that the wires are all going in that direction. So now I'm gonna do the other two, and I will be right back. 
Okay. Uh, one little thing that I had not anticipated, I hooked up the wires and everything. And then when I went to test close this, I found that the center piece that goes into the little hole in the bottom that you screw to hold the whole thing together, it kind of goes right where the wire was, the black big chunk. So I cut off a little more of the insulation and this is just like, I don't know, white fibers, more insulation, whatever. Uh, but I cut off the black insulation, cut some of the white little fiber things just so I could get in there, bent the wires so the black and the white are going around this centerpiece. So now I am able to actually close it up. So I hadn't anticipated that but that's why I make these videos for you kind folk out in YouTube land so that you don't have to make the same mistakes as me okay so I closed it up put the screw in I really should have a better screwdriver but whatever okay and I'm just Tightening it, tightening it, tightening it, tightening it, tightening it, tightening it. Okay, so it is all done. It looks totally good, totally um, professional. It doesn't look like a hack job. And um, by the way, when this clamps down, there's little sort of um, arced pieces in here that hold on to this for a little extra stress relief, a little extra strain relief. So anyway, there we are, as good as new. Fixed up a very expensive, a very inexpensive practice amp. So let's plug it in and see how it sounds and see if I don't blow up. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in. So far, so good. I didn't blow up. I'm going to try the amp. And I should plug a guitar into it too, but okay, amp turned on. Hey, and it totally worked. So hopefully, this helps some people. And here I'll plug a guitar into it just for the heck of it. So. You can actually can see it's the little crate on the side there. So uh, on. There we go. It works. Success.